So we as scientists have got an uphill struggle to somehow get this across and do it in a non-patronizing way. And um, it's, that, that's a hard thing to do, but we've got to struggle at it. I think scientists have an awesome responsibility. And here I'm talking about all scientists, not just medical scientists, because the scientific method coming out of the age of enlightenment is a beautiful philosophy. It's a humane philosophy. It's a, a philosophy, if adopted, will inevitably continue to improve length of life and quality of life. We have an awesome responsibility. We can do it. And the word he used, patronize. We don't have to patronize the lay public. I often speak to lay people. The average lay person understands these issues very well, but seldom has the opportunity to consider them. Yes. When you were talking earlier about um, loss of respect for authority, I worried a little bit about that because I sort of feel one of the problems is, is that people have come to treat scientists as authorities and perhaps it would be mm. better if what we taught people was how to evaluate the evidence and say, mm. look, don't take my word for it because I'm a professor. Take my word for it because I've done this clinical trial. Take yes. my word for it because the tests have been done. And it's not that difficult to understand the principles of an experiment, the principles of a, of a, of a randomized trial. So you don't have to listen to me. My opinion is, is irrelevant just because I'm, I'm a professor of medicine. This trial shows the evidence. You can evaluate it yourself. Absolutely. Day one, every time I have a new bunch of medical students, we call it the surgical firm, and they're in awe of me, and they sit around in our tutorial room, and the first thing I say, you're probably frightened of me or in awe of me because I'm a professor, an elderly professor. Forget that. I'm here to guide you how to acquire knowledge. Your role is to challenge everything I say. And if I can't come up with evidence to support what I say, your role is to say, well, you're wrong, professor. But just saying you're wrong is nihilistic. I will then say, OK, I'm probably wrong. How would you set up the study to investigate this problem? And the key word in that, what you've just said, is evidence, not feeling, not authority, not it feels right to me or no. anything like that. It is evidence, and evidence can be, can be looked at by anybody. The nature of evidence is a subject which really should be taught at schools. And I, I think a part of the problem here is the way science is uh, considered and taught amongst kids. Science is considered to be a difficult subject. Uh, let's do media studies instead, <laughs> with the greatest respect <laughs> of it. <laughs> um, but uh, the basic philosophies of science are simple to comprehend and very seductive. And I'm sure if we got uh, kids uh, very early on in uh, secondary school uh, and taught science at this level first, the methods and the philosophy of science, we would have a scientifically literate population. My deep concern is we have a scientifically literate uh, population, a scientifically illiterate house of commons, and mind you, many of our best scientists are in the house of laws, but that's by the way. And worse than that, they take pride in their scientific illiteracy. Uh, whereas we would be insulted if anyone called us illiterate. And yet there's this peculiar pride, ugh, don't bother me with molecules, uh, I'm in favor of uh, the universe and everything that's beautiful, you spoil it by talking about molecules. The opposite is the truth. The reality of the solar system, the cosmos, the uh, internal organization of our bodies is so beautiful and awesome it, and it, true and it beats anything these other people, the illiterate, scientifically illiterate, can conjure up infinitely more beautiful.